Hi everybody, I'm David McGon. Today I'm going to lead you through a short sequence of postures that you can use to work into a full split. Before you start this video, you want to be a little bit warmed up, so you shut off the computer, take a few laps around your house, do a bunch of jumping jacks, sun salutations, whatever gets you a little bit sweaty, and then when you're ready, we'll get down to the practice. Now when you're ready to begin, come to a lunging posture with your left leg forward and your right leg back. Ideally, you want your left knee to be directly above the ankle itself, so if you need to either scoot forward or back a little bit until you find that that's the case, be sure to do so. This first one will stretch your hip flexors and your quadriceps. To get there, place both hands on the floor near the inside of your foot, roll your right hip around and down toward the ground, and just let it feel as though your hips were falling toward the earth. Let them get super, super heavy in the middle and breathe as deeply as you possibly can. If you're ready to go on to the next step, let your left knee tilt sideways a little bit, but keep the flat of your foot on the floor, and then lean forward and onto your elbows. Now this brings you to a somewhat different intensity level, so again, just let your hips get really, really heavy. But as you do this, roll your right hip around and down. As your hips settle toward the floor, just relax all of your muscles as much as possible. In addition to getting just a little bit of hip flexor stretch, you'll probably feel some openness in your left hip and hamstrings as well. Now to turn this into the quadricep stretch, place your left hand on your left knee and then parallel your right arm by reaching across and actually grab a hold of your foot there. Rotate your chest toward the bent leg. Once you've got to that place, bend your back leg, the right one, reach your left hand back, kind of go on a fishing expedition back there and try to grab a hold of your foot. Though if you can't reach, you could always use a yoga strap. Once you've got the foot itself, twist your chest open to the side and very gently draw your right heel toward your right butt cheek. Now it's possible to touch those two points together, but today, if you're not quite there, it's totally cool. Just draw it in until you feel a really solid stretch in the middle of your right front thigh. Twist your chest a little bit left while you're at it. And imagine you could send your inhales into the spots that feel tense or maybe tight. Now to bail out of that one, just let go of the foot, let it float all the way back down to the ground. Plant your left hand outside your left ankle, your right hand under your shoulder, and press up to a straight arm position. For the next one, we're going to target your outer hip a little more thoroughly. So turn the toes of your left foot sideways, curl your toes back, and keeping your ankle nice and stiff, let your left knee tilt all the way out to the side. This one can be done in a couple ways. If this is really intense for you already, just practice with straight arms. So if you want a little more intensity, you can take your elbows all the way down to the floor. Now if you do that, just make sure you lock your left elbow against your left arch so that your foot's less likely to slip. Roll your right hip around and down until the flashlight beam in your belt buckle shines straight at the floor. And then just continuously allow your left knee to tilt sideways until you feel a serious, serious stretch in your left butt cheek. If you want to increase that stretch, kick your right foot back until your back knee lifts and stretch the top of the head forward to the word the wall that you're looking at. Now this next one targets your adductor muscles to some degree, your inner thigh muscles and your hamstrings, the muscles of the back left leg. Plant your hands under your chest, press all the way up to straight arms. And then draw your left knee back to vertical again and point your left toes forward. Bending your right leg, pick your back foot up, swing the leg at the diagonal back toward the left, and then walk your hands a little further over to your right. In this one, make sure your left leg stays bent to 90 degrees, your knee is directly above the ankle. Lean forward and take your elbows down to the floor. Now while you hold there, again, just let your hips feel as though they were falling. Let them drop very slowly and gently down toward the earth. And all the pressure exerted with your foot against the floor will totally drive some stretch into your left hamstrings. You get a little bit of inner thigh openness as well. Lots and lots of really deep breath. Now this next one prepares your hamstrings. Plant your hands under your chest and come all the way up and then swing your right leg back so that you're in the full-on lunge again. 
come up to your fingertips and straighten your left leg as much as you can. Now as you do this, come up onto your left heel so your big toe points up. Shift your hips back a little bit so your back leg is relatively vertical and lengthen straight out to the top of your head. If that's enough stretch, totally stay there. Otherwise, bend your elbows, lean into it a little bit, curl your chin to your chest, and take your forehead down to rest upon your shin. Now finally, we're going to put it all together. Lift upward with your chest, and then bend your front leg. As you do this, let your front knee be well, uh, your front ankle be well ahead of the knee, and squiggle your right leg backward just a little tiny bit for a three-quarter split. Now, while you do this, come up to your fingertips. Just like all those exercises before, let your hips feel as though they were falling toward the earth. As you do this, you'll start to feel a little more stretch in the back of the left leg itself, and to some degree, maybe even the hip flexors in the back, in the mid front of the right leg, right where the leg meets the hip. If your hamstrings are tight, you can always work on this variation as opposed to the full extravaganza, but if you're ready to go on, work with your back leg. To enter the split, squiggle your right leg backward, and as you do that, let your left leg be pulled to a straighter position. Now, if you're bendy, it's possible to go straight into it, but if you're still working up toward this, just kind of hang out there with your hips lifted off of the floor, and take the top of your back foot all the way down to the earth. Point the toes of your left foot to lengthen everything just a little bit, and relax as deeply as possible. Sometimes rocking the hips back and forth and side to side will help to open your hip flexors in the back a little bit as well. Now as you enter the full split or go deeper, you want to protect the hamstrings in the front leg. So to do that, just imagine your hips were like a vacuum cleaner and suck your left leg bone backward into the socket a little bit. Once you've done that, Stretch strongly back through your right tiptoes and slide your right leg back just a little bit further. And then again, maybe rock side to side and back and forth to open up the hip flexors in the back leg. Now, if at any given point it starts to feel like too much stretch, just back out a little bit. Now if you're ready to go on, repeat. Point your toes in the front, which will lengthen everything just a little bit further. Suck your left leg bone back in the socket kind of plug it into the joint, and slide your rear leg back to the back of the class. Now, as you do this, allow your right hip to roll open to the side very, very gently. And again, rock back and forth and side to side to loosen the hip flexors in the back. Now you can repeat this over and over again until you find your final edge, but if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, suck your left leg bone into the socket, have it unplugged in the leg itself, Slide your rear leg back to the rear. Maybe walk your hands back just a little tiny bit. Let your sitting bones get really, really heavy and sink toward the mat, and then breathe as deeply as you can. And when you're ready to bail out of whatever it is that you're doing, plant your hands near the inner knee, sweep all the way back, and come to a child's pose to relax your hamstrings. Now, if you're doing this at home, you'll of course want to repeat that entire cycle over there on the other side. With a split, it's best to practice every other day so your hamstrings have time to recuperate after you work on this. So I would recommend practicing once in the morning, once in the afternoon on the days that you decide to practice. Take off the next day, maybe work on some backbending practices, and when you come back to it again, your body will have had time to recover and it'll be a little bit easier to go on. So as always, hit me up if you have any questions, and I hope you have fun. Take care, and be well.